Good morning. It's great to see you today. We have the great honor to follow somebody on their journey to be baptized in water. Yes. And by the way, if you've never been baptized in water, we have shorts and shirts and t-shirts and, uh, uh, and towels. So if you'll go uh, right over here, this beautiful young lady over here, the tall one, uh, she will help you. We'll get you set up. And, uh, you know, it's, it's very important on our journey that we follow the, 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 the principle that Jesus laid down. He was baptized, and he didn't need to be baptized, but he was baptized as an example to us. So what's thrilling today is when we watch this candidate being baptized, it's symbolic of what's happened in his life, of how that Jesus Christ has changed him. So uh, when he goes under the water, it's representative of the old person, and we come up, it's the new person. So who do we have today, Anita? This is Dylan Cohen. Dylan. Hey, Dylan. Dylan! Dylan, how old are you? 12. Dylan is 12, but Dylan's been coming here since he was about three, I think. Wow, that's right? awesome. Yes. That's so awesome. it's been awesome to watch him in his journey with Jesus, and to take this step today of baptism is amazing. So as we watch Dylan, yeah. let's make sure we make a lot of noise when he comes up out of the water, because that's signifying new life in yeah. Jesus, okay? Well, let's All right, pray. yay. Amen. Father, we thank you today, Lord, for Dylan. We thank you that he's following your example. And so we pray that this day sticks in his mind forever as a life change, Lord. And we thank you for young people who make a commitment. And today we worship you because you are worthy of worship in your name. And let's stand, let's worship and celebrate today. Amen. There is peace in the valley When the enemy's surrounding I will not fear There is light in the darkness He's the fire by night Always with us All hope in the day No weapon can stand again joy in the trial know this fight is over and he's just begun there is strength in the waiting he's the faithful one never failing no oh. all hope in the name
give him praise in this place. He is the great I am. Amen? No matter what weapon has tried to form itself against you, know that he is greater. Amen. Blessed are those who run to him, who place their hope and confidence in Jesus. He won't forsake them. Blessed are those who seek his face, who bend their knee and fix their gaze on Jesus. They won't be shaken. Come on and praise the Lord with me. Sing if you love his name. And lift your voice with me. He's worthy of all our praise. Blessed are those who walk with Him, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage with Jesus. They'll see His glory. Blessed are those who die to live, whose joy it is to give it all for Jesus and for Him only. Oh, Jesus, all for Your glory. Come on in praise the Lord with me. Sing if you love. fields of plenty bless god in the darkest valley every chance i get i'll bless your name bless god when my hands are empty bless god with the praise that costs me bless god when nobody's watching every chance i get i'll bless your name bless god when the weapons for me bless god when the walls are falling Bless God, cause He goes before me. Every chance I get, I'll bless Your name. Bless God, for He holds the victory. Bless God, for He's always with me. Bless God, for He's always worthy. Every chance I get, I'll bless Your name. Every chance I get, I bless Your name. Every chance I get, come on and praise the Lord with me. Sing if you love His name. Come on and lift your voice with me. He's worthy of all our praise. Yes, he is worthy of all our praise. 
performing miracles today and it's he's always with us it's, it's us that loses the focus so when you feel like you're far away from him you seek him seek him first Revelation 3:20 says that behold I stand at the door knocking and if you open the door he will come in he says, I will come in and share a meal with you. That's, <laughs> that hits so hard because it's on an intimate level. And all he wants is a relationship with each and every one of us yes. as his children. Don't you think that God, if he would come into your heart and share a meal with you, won't he heal you? Yes. <laughs> won't he bless you? He clothes the lilies of the field and the birds of the air. He feeds them. Won't he do a miracle for you. So as we sing this next song, I pray that we sing it with an expectation because he's the same God that parted the Red Sea. He's the same God that, that, the, <laughs> that shut the mouths of lions. He's the same God that was the fourth man standing in the fire. He's the same God. We thank you, Jesus. Calling on the God of Jacob, whose love endures through generations. I know that you will keep your covenant. I'm calling on the God of Moses. The one who opened up the ocean. I need you now to do the same thing for me. Yes, Lord. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you. I'm standing on your faithfulness, on your faithfulness. Oh. I'm calling on the God of Mary, whose favor rests upon the On the God of David, who made a shepherd more courageous. Yes, he did. I may not face the lion, but I've got my own giant. Oh, God, my God, I need you. Oh, God, my God, I need you now.
never changes, no And he never fails
in the name of Jesus, do what only you can do in this place and in our hearts, Lord. And everyone all over the church said, Amen. He's an amazing God, isn't he? Well, before you sit down, if you just turn to someone you haven't met before and welcome them to the Father's house. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Father's house. Let's make some noise, guys. You know how blessed we are to be in this country, to be able to worship him freely? Um, welcome to the Father's house. My name is Kelly. And my name is Serenity. And we are so excited to have you with us here this morning. If you are new to the Father's house today, right in front of you, we want to just first off say thank you for being with us. We want to get to know you um, as much as you're comfortable with. So in the seat in front of you, you'll find this connection card here. If you can fill it out to the place that you're comfortable with filling it out, giving us the information that you're comfortable with, hold on to it. And then after service, we have a place in the foyer. It's called um, New Here, Start Here. And this is a great place for you to connect and we can find out more about you and you can find out about more about our vision for the Father's House as well. For those of you that are old school, that you've been here for a hot minute, we wanna say thank you and we love you too. If there's anything that has changed as far as your email address, your physical address, prayer requests, praise reports, pop that on that, to that connection card and put it in the, um, the offering buckets as they pass through. And again, we just wanted to uh, tell you how excited we are here to have you here today. And we're going to give it over to Miss Pretty Thing here. <laughs> All right. So every week we want to remind ourselves what our mission is here at TFH. So we're going to go ahead and say that together. We are bringing hope in impacting our community, community by leading, leading people into, into a, a growing, growing relationship, relationship with, with Jesus. Jesus. So one of the ways we bring hope and impacting our community is through our faithful, cheerful giving. You'll hear more about that and have the opportunity to give at the end of service in one of the four ways you see up there on the screen. We also do something around here called Change for Change, and this month it goes towards benevolence. Yes. Also, there's a lot going on here at TFH, but not because we need something to fill our calendars, right? Exactly. <laughs> Everything we do around here helps us take a step in growing our relationship with Jesus and others. Whether you're male, female, young, or old, we have something for everyone. So make sure you regularly go to thefathershouse.com to stay in the know, or there's a QR code up there as well. So stay connected, and you don't miss a thing. All right, if you want to go ahead and pray us out. All right, guys, let's pray. Hey, Jesus, we love you, we love you, we love you. We thank you for everything that you've already done today and all the things that you um, still have yet to do. Thank you for preparing our hearts, our minds, and our spirits to hear the word that we come challenged and ready to do the next step that you've called us to do. In your name, you get all praise, all glory. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. Black History Month is the celebration and commemoration of black achievements. A month dedicated to African Americans and the African American community to show the fight and struggles that African Americans went through and still go through. It allows me to really appreciate like the friends that I have and appreciate their culture and really get to learn about like our history as um, like Americans together but also like the origins of where like other people come from and I think that's very important. Well, it's a time that we as a society and as a people, not just in America, but all over the world, come together to celebrate black people and all that we have done in spite of adversity. There's a lot of people in the world that are not educated about Black History Month or just about African-American history. Without everyone back then, I wouldn't be where I'm at pretty much. Like, 
Jackie Robinson or Martin Luther King. I think it's important especially to follow like the history of civil rights leaders like Martin Luther King so that we can just like never revert back to the place that we were before. Everyone at the end of the day should be equal no matter what um, skin color race you are. It's a time for black people to value themselves and celebrate themselves and it's a time for non-black people to also celebrate and understand that black history is a part of world history, not just American history, not just their town's history, but the history and the advancement of the world and of us as people. For us to say like, yeah, we're black, we're African American, but it's a lot of meaning behind that, that we should educate and let people know about that for white individuals for them to be around other black people or have like black friends or family members or even like mixed friends and family members. I feel like that's important for them as well so they can be educated and just know what we have been through or what we still go through. So it's a very important month to me. Wow, it's great to see you today, man. I love that worship. On this rainy day, you came out on a day like this. You guys get double awards when you get to heaven. I really believe that. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. It's a great opportunity today. I want to thank you for all the uh, birthday cards and gifts. Um, and so they're still coming in because with me, it's a birthday month. When you get as old as I am, you can do that. Uh, let me just share with you also, we're in this uh, series on relationships, and we're doing a, a, another uh, version plan this week that will go for 21 days, and it's called Better Together. So you can go to our website, and you can click on that, or you can use the QR code and sign up. It's going to be awesome. Well, how many know what's happening the last Sunday of March? Easter. Easter. Easter, he is risen, uh, the resurrection of Jesus, and it's also our 28th year church anniversary on Easter. But Easter is the time in which separates Christianity from all other religions. All other religions can tell you the time that their founder was born and died, but you'll not find that with Jesus. You go to his tomb and it says he's not here for he is risen. So on Easter, more people are aware and want to come to church than any other time. So we recognize that, and we realize that, that we've been running between six and 700 adults in here, plus kids next door, and we know Easter, we're going to max out. So uh, we've been praying, and so on Easter, we're going to do three services. We're going to do a 730, a 9 o'clock, and an 11. And I'm going to ask you to do your best to invite people. I'm trusting that you will uh, cooperate and that you will use what God has spoken to you and said, it's a great time to say, hey, would you come to, with me? It's Easter service. It's going to be really great. We've got a lot of things. And we're going to be having, we're going to give out tickets in the next week or so to distribute how many we have in the first service, the second, and the third. And then you can take that ticket to your friend and say, you know what? You're so special. I got you a special ticket that's a reserve seat for our 7.30 or 9 or 11 o'clock, and I really believe that we're going to pack out this place three times. I'm believing that because last time I checked, the Lord is worthy of that. Would you believe that? Would you say amen to that? So I really like for you to begin asking people. We've got about four weeks now asking, hey, come with me on Easter. Come with me. It's going to be great. We're going to be great. It's going to be a great time. So looking forward to that. Well, if you have your Bible, your iPhone, your iPad, whatever you use the scripture, let's save this together today. This is my Bible. It is the word of God. It is life to me. Today, I receive the word. I confess my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I am obedient in Jesus' name. Father, we, uh, we just thank you today for your presence. Man, when we were singing that song, we just, we just felt you here. And Lord, we need you. That's what we say every day. And as I approach this teaching today, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would uh, bring forth the anointing that 
you have given. I pray you'd help me to say everything I need to say. Don't let me say anything I shouldn't say. And Lord, at the end of today, I pray that you may be glorified, the saints may be edified, and the devil may be terrified in the name of Jesus. Well, we're in this series, Extreme Makeover Relationship Edition, and next week we'll finalize that. Next week is our international day in which that we ask people to celebrate their heritage, wear uh, clothing from your, from your background, and so I'm sure you've already gotten an email about that, and Pastor Kevin will be with us. He's got a powerful message. I talked with him last night about the teaching. God's given him a brand new teaching because, you know what, we are better together, right? You believe that? Say, we're better together. So if you got your notes, you see the title today, Dealing with Difficult People. Now, I know, I know that as soon as some of you read that, you've already got those people in mind, right? How many of you? Raise your hand. You know, those people, right? Those people. Those people that make life difficult, and they make dealing with relationships difficult. So I was thinking in the last three or four weeks about uh, those challenging people. So let's look at some of the challenging people. This this list is not exhaustive, but it is a good one to start. First of all is the critic. They constantly complain, and they're always giving you unwanted advice, right? right? And then there's the martyr. They're forever the victim, full of self pity, right? They feel rejected. And they feel like that their lot in life is to be burned at the stake because nobody appreciates them, nobody understands them. And they say things like this to you. Oh, don't worry about me. I'm fine. You don't need to invite me over. I I don't need to be included in that. You know, it's just, you just don't have time for my worries. You, you You know what I mean? The martyr. And then there's the wet blanket. The pessimistic automatically negative person. I mean, they attend the wedding and they say, oh, the wedding was beautiful, but I can't believe the groom didn't lose more weight. He's fat. (laughs) And they're usually negative about whatever you're excited about. You know what I mean? I mean, when they smell flowers, they start looking for a coffin. (laughs) And then there's a steamroller. They are blindly insensitive to their words and to other people. I mean, they're liable liable to say to you, what's wrong with your hair today? I never noticed your nose was that big. Are you wearing those? Those clothes don't match you wearing those. And they're just insensitive, and they're just like a steamroller. And then there's the control freak. You know what I mean? Unable to let go and not willing to let be, like the little boy, he was holding a cat's tail and it was screaming and his mother yelled at him, quit pulling on that cat's tail. He said, I'm not pulling, I'm holding. He's merely pulling away. (laughs) So sometimes they have a hard time just letting go. And then of course, there's the volcano. Mm -mm -mm. They build up steam. (sighs) You can see it. You watch their face get red. You watch their eyes. You watch the veins in their neck pop. You watch that, and then you start to see them. Saliva comes out of the side of their mouth because they're trying to hold everything in. And if things don't go their way, what do they do? They just erupt and just explode all over you, and they're just selfish, and they're plain rude. Say rude. Rude. And then there's a sponge. Oh, the sponge constantly soaking up your life. They're clinging to you for dear life. I mean, they're jealous of what you've got. They're jealous of who you are. And they're just, they're clinging. Well, I don't know. How can you get something new like that? I don't know. Oh, I wish, you know, if you, hey, if you ever want to get rid of that, you know, you can give it to me. I think that that'll fit, that'll fit me, you know, just like, oh, come on, the sponge. And this one is, the next one is the manipulator. Could be a relative. And they say to you, well, you, you, you're not coming over for, for the birthday party? 
I mean, this is, this is an important birthday party. How could you be part of the family and, and, and not come over? You, you need to do that. Or maybe it's a friend of yours that just always manipulating you and uh, they're just demanding things of you. Look, life is too short to go through it being controlled and doing things out of guilt. Right? They guilt you. Well, you know, I haven't seen you for a while, but, you know, it's okay. A true friend doesn't do you that way. And then there's the one-upper. I just added this one because I thought this one was so good. They know everything about everything. And they're going to tell you every chance they get. I mean, they're always right, right about everything. I mean, they were right about COVID because their sources are better than yours. They're right about the political election coming up because their sources are better than yours. And if you say something to them, say, well, I I had the opportunity to invite two people to church. And then they'll say, oh, yeah, I I invited five last week. Or in today's world, they put it on Instagram. In other words, they're going to one up whatever you say. And like almost eight out of eight billion people in the world They think they're the smartest person who ever lived. Now, as we look through that list, if you say, wow, I don't have any of these in my life. It's you. (laughs) Nobody wanted to tell you, but you're that person. And some of you fill a lot of different categories here. Dealing with difficult people. It drains our energy, it eats up our time, it creates stress of unnecessary hassles. So today I want to talk to you about how can we deal with those people in such a way that honors who they are and shows the love of God. I love this verse. Would you read it with me out loud? Romans 12, 17 through 19. Discover beauty in everyone. Let's just stop there. Look around. Look at the beauty this morning. All ages, different colors, tall, short, challenged. Look at this next line. If you've got it in you, get along with everybody. That should be a country song. Get along with everybody, all right? Look at your neighbor and say, let's just get along. Don't insist on getting even. That's not for you. I'll do the judging, says God. I'll take care of it. So what are we going to do? First of all, we got to start here. we got to check the mirror. Because you see, what often happens is that long list, because you are one of those or you have several of those, then you know who is a difficult person for you? Someone that's just like you. I mean, you see it in the, you see the manipulating, you see the controlling, you, you, you see all of those things. So I have to ask God, are these characteristics in my life? Am I the person when somebody sees me at public, all publics, all of a sudden they go to a different lane so they don't have to be around me? You've done that. You say, oh, I, I, so-and-so is here. I'm, I'm not going here. Let's go somewhere else. Why? They drain the life out of you. But what if that person is you? You say, I don't have any good relationships. What if it's because you're one of those people? And it's hard for people to get close to you because you put on one of those roles and that's how you live. Look at this, Matthew 7. Don't pick on people jump on their failures, criticize their faults, unless, of course, you want the same treatment. That critical spirit has a way of boomeranging. It's easy to see a smudge on your neighbor's face and be oblivious to the ugly sneer on your own. Do you have the nerve to say, let me wash your face for you, when your own face is distorted with contempt? It's the whole thing, traveling roadshow mentality all over again playing a holier-than-thou part instead of just living your part. Wipe the ugly sneer off your face, and you might be fit to offer a washcloth to your neighbor. Why do some of these things bother me? Because it's some of the things that I need to deal with in my life. Number two today, 
Deal with your anger. Deal with your anger. Andrea did a fabulous job. Didn't she do a fabulous job last week talking about this? Just unbelievable. But when you go on social media or you meet someone and they're one of those, those people, it, it, it causes us to, our initial response is to get frustrated because of them. And then sometimes if we let that, if we let that just be there, then we get actually, we get angry. What should have just been a frustration now becomes anger because we don't deal with it. Ephesians 4 and 26, go ahead, be angry. You do well to be angry, but don't use your anger as fuel for revenge and don't stay angry. Andrea talked about that last week. There's nothing wrong with anger. But it's when we allow that anger then to begin ruling over us and we show that towards other people. We need to be angry about social injustice. We need to be angry about those things. Number two, deal with your anger. Number three, don't take the bait. Don't take the bait. Those people love to post something on social media about, it's going to be a tough year, politically. People are already building walls and dividing where they are in the midst of that. And so they begin talk about politics. They begin talking about the vaccine. They just begin arguing about everything, argue about the culture. They say, you know what? We need to boycott Starbucks. We need to boycott Chick-fil-A. We need to do this. And then they send you all those conspiracy theories, right? And so so you you, you focus on that, and they're critical, judgmental, self-centeredness. And the moment, the moment you take the bait, they post something on social media, and you say, oh, that's not right. That's not right. I'm, I'm going to set them straight. So as soon as you go on on social media and you try to set somebody straight, guess what? You've got about 100 other people join in the conversation. And before you know it, it's exploded beyond where you ever wanted to go with that. I'm telling you, when people make stupid remarks on Instagram, unless they're your dear friend, you need to just say, well, they're just stupid. <laughs> and just go on. Don't try to fix everybody. And as we move into this political year coming up, don't allow yourself to be divided. The church should be a unification force, not a divided force. Amen? Let's let's just trust that and believe that. Don't take the bait. And number four, choose not to be offended. I tell myself that being offended is inevitable, but living offended is a choice. Say it's a choice. Jesus said in Luke 17 and 1, offenses will come. So he said, they're going to come, so you need to deal with it. And so that person that affects you, you just go out of your way to not even be around them because you're just just so frustrated and you're carrying offense. And if somebody said, are you offended by that person? Why Why do you not like that person? And if we're not careful, it's because we're carrying an offense in our life. Number five, watch your words. This is one of the toughest things in relationships. You know, even with a husband and wife, it starts off in a conversation. And then what does it do? You, You begin raising your voice and it goes a little bit farther. And then it escalates. And then before you know it, You're in a whole major disagreement in the midst of all of that because we're not watching the words that come out of our mouth. So let me just give you a few suggestions. Here's the first one. No name calling. No name calling. No name calling. Look at this verse, Ephesians 4 and 29. Do not say bad things that hurt or insult people. Instead, say only good things that will help people. Your words should help people to become strong when they hear them. So when you're talking to your spouse, your kids, you got to ask yourself, are the words that I'm using giving them strength or am I just trying to use my words to put them in their place? No name calling. 
There's no reason, no excuse to be dishonoring and call someone names. And second one, never raise your voice. No one has ever been changed by somebody who's yelling. Uh, they're changed by a loving voice. And then never get historical. No, I didn't mean hysterical. I meant historical. Don't go back in time and say, yeah, here we go again. It's the same thing. I remember you said this before and you didn't change it. I remember back in 1852, before you were ever born, yeah, there was just a curse that came on your life and it's there. It's just, it's always that way. And never say never or always. You know that one? Well, you always do that. Or you never open the door for me. Or you never think about me. Or you never, don't use those words because they get you nowhere. And, and the next one, especially if you're married, if you're married, don't threaten divorce. The word divorce should never come in your marriage or in your house. Murder, maybe. <laughs> I, I wasn't serious there, but evidently I hit a nerve, right? And never quote your pastor during a fight. I can hear it now when you get home this afternoon, something happens. You say, but Pastor Terry said, don't bring me into your conversation. I know I give you some good points, but when it comes to a conflict, keep me out of that. And number six, take the pressure off yourself. This right here, what I'm gonna say is gonna relieve some of you of your frustration because of the manipulative family members. It's not your responsibility to make other people happy. Wow. There we go. Well, if I, if I don't go, if I don't do that, then they're gonna be upset and, and I don't want them to be upset. You are never in charge of someone's happiness. They have to make that choice. The sooner you realize it's not up to me to, to help people to get to a happy place if they're not willing to deal with it themselves. And number seven, we have to set some boundaries. Set some boundaries. You can be nice. You can be loving. You can be kind. But somewhere along the line, you have to set a boundary. You have to say things like this. No. I can't come over right now. No, I'm not going to let you dump all your problems on me and expect me to solve them. I'm not going to feel guilty because I can't meet all your demands. And I'm not going to live down on myself because I don't perform to your standards. Set boundaries. You know what that means? That may mean for a season that you stay away from certain people. You have to set a boundary. But you don't have to constantly be feeling guilty about where you are. And of all of those, probably this, the last one is the most important. Pray this prayer. It's important to pray a really dangerous yet humbling prayer. Would you read this out loud with me? Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. That's where we have to start. God, help me to see myself as you see me. Am I full of anger? Am I a manipulator? Am I always raising my voice? Am I the one that's causing problems in this relationship? If you're here today and you're a Christ follower, we just finished looking at the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is what we need. That's why we started, first of all, with internal, inside makeover. And then we're coming to relationships. And then the first Sunday of March, we're going to start another in this extreme. We're going to talk about all of us together and the unity that comes in being part of a church. Those of you that are followers of Christ, I want to pray for relationships this week that God will help you to apply some of these principles.
Would you bow your head with me and let's pray together. Father, I pray for everyone that's here today. And I pray, Lord, that we start here and we ask you to search our heart. Know us because sometimes, Lord, you need to test our heart and show us who we really are. And God, if we're constantly in conflict, show us why. If we're constantly ticking people off and they don't want to be around us, show us why. Because, Lord, we want to live with the fruit of the Spirit flowing in our life. As you continue to pray today, maybe you're here today and you've never invited Jesus into your heart and into your life. Let me tell you today how much God loves you. God loves you so much that he sent his son Jesus to die on a cross for your sins and my sins. Now we say that sometimes, he died on the cross for my sins, but what does that mean? That means that God took all of the sins, me and you, those people in the Old Testament that look forward to the coming of the Messiah, and those after the Messiah that will look back and put their faith in Jesus. God hates sin. And all that sin, your sin and mine, fell upon Jesus. And God cannot look upon the sinfulness. And Jesus cries out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He felt the cost of your sin and my sin. He died, but on the third day he rose. And that's what separates us from every other religion. Jesus lives today. He's not dead. So if you're here today and you say, Terry, I know I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. I really want to invite Jesus into my life today. And the Holy Spirit is speaking to your heart. You don't have to understand it all. You just have to be willing to take what he did on the cross and let it apply to your life. Because if you don't take that, then you have to pay for your sins. Are you sure you want to pay for your sins? Are you sure you want to spend an eternity separated from God? Or today, are you ready to say, I trust him. And I'm going to transfer the control of my life to Jesus. Because I need something that's beyond me. If that's you today, would you raise your hand and make eye contact with me and say, yeah, that's me. I want to do that today. I want to pray that prayer. Thank you. Others today say, yep, yeah, that's me. That's me. I need to do that. Thank you. Others today. Yes, Lord. And those of you that are watching online, just raise your hand right where you are and say, yeah, that's me. I need to invite Jesus into my heart and into my life. Let's pray this prayer together, will you? Father God, Thank you for loving me. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for my sins. I'm a sinner and I need a savior. As best as I know how, I want to serve you all the days of my life. Fill me with your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Church, would you celebrate with me today, those who prayed that prayer? That's the greatest decision you'll ever make. Now you follow him into water baptism. You can go online, sign up for that. You can use your connection card and sign up for that. Also, a first step table over here and over here. We've got a book and some materials to give you to help you on your journey because it's going to be wonderful. And we get, to, we get to do one of the most exciting things I love, and that's to worship in our giving. Thank you for your giving. You know, we're right in the middle of our Leave a Legacy campaign, believing God for $200,000 for missions and for a couple of adjustments that need to happen here at the church building. So today I want to pray that God would bless you as you give and bless you as you're prayerfully asking him, what will you have me to give? Father, I thank you today. Bless every giver today in your name, Jesus, in your name. God bless you as they pass the buckets.
drop in your connection card, your change, your tithe, your offering. It's going to be a wonderful day today in the Lord. Don't miss next week. It's going to be unbelievable. Pastor Kevin will be with us. He's always got a powerful teaching. Looking forward to that. It'll be awesome. Well, let's worship some more in this song. And after the bucket passed you, then you can stand and worship with us today. Bless God in the sanctuary. Bless God in the fields of plenty. Bless God in the darkest valley. Every chance I get, I bless your name. Bless God when my hands are empty. Bless God when the praise that costs me. Bless God when nobody's watching. Every chance I get, I bless your name. 